In the year 1685, this piece of land called the Driesprung, today known as Mirati, was granted to a German soldier. His name was Lawrence Kampfer. The governor granted him this piece of land with uh, certain instructions in Dutch, which were the following, the Planten, the Puerten, the Timmeren and the Zion. What is interesting for us is that the Melk family, their first involvement at Mirati happened in the year 1763. That's our ancestor, Martin Melk, the first Melk that arrived in the Cape. So the Melk clan, they lived here for approximately about 115 years and then the farm basically disappeared out of the family. One of the more colourful characters that um, lived at Mirati was George Paul Karnitz. He was a part-time art lecturer at the University of Stellenbosch. He was invited to a braai by the neighbour. He somehow got lost and ended up at Mirati and his daughter Alberta was with him. They just loved the feel of the place, the energy, the bohemian feel, and he decided to buy it. In 1927, Karnitz then decided to plant the first Pinot Noir in South Africa. So we have this little fact, the first Pinot Noir in South Africa was made here at Mirati. Having said that, we will also know that Pinotage is the cross between Hermitage and Pinot Noir. So by all events, uh, Mirati played a very big role in the creating of Pinotage because Professor Perrot came and took the Pinot Noir cuttings from Mirati to start his project. Carlos lived here a very uh, bohemian lifestyle. His daughter Alberta took over the estate when he passed away in 1958. During the period of the, of the late 50s till 1987, Mirati was pretty much caught in a bit of a time warp. Things didn't happen much here. There was no progression when it came to winemaking. It was very classic, very traditional, but that bohemian feel, the energy, the charm of the place that we have here today is directly attributed to that feel that Alberta and her late father, George Paul Carnitz, had here at Mirati. And uh, she was here feisty, strong, determined, and she was the one who then phoned my late father in about 1987 and said she would be very happy and it would be a good idea if the Melks came back to Mirati. And that's how she sold the estate to my father. So when we came here, I sort of see it as the end of the, you know, the Renaissance. And our passion for creating something special is very, very evident. Having said that, that I think is one of the unique charms of Mirati Wine Estate today is that we are still a classic working wine estate. You can come and visit us, you'll see geese walking around in the vineyards, you have dogs running around. It's a living place. We want people to see how wine is made, real wine is made in the classic combined with modern technology. We have to thank Alberta for that because the estate oozes a charm here that you cannot create that. Mirati just has that X factor and that is what is important for us. I see myself as a custodian to this last bit of real farming history that we have in the Stellenbosch district. So we have been back now for just over 30 years and over the years we have managed to generate and create a nice situation where uh, the farm has become a destination, uh, not only for the premium wines that we produce here, but also for the people that love history, that are more interested in not just the wine aspect, but also the history of what happened here, how the people lived, combining that with art and with food obviously now. So it's become a real destination for the tourist, for the seasoned traveler and for the young inexperienced wine drinker that perhaps wants to learn more about wine and see how real classic wine's made.